All right. Good evening to all of you. Thanks for uh, joining us this evening. We're going to get started. So it is uh, our general meeting of February 23rd here at the uh, Ganondigal Recreation. I'm going to call the meeting to order. We have the acceptance of the agenda rules of order. Follow up from the last uh, general meeting of December 1st. We have a presentation this evening on the Block 1 lands presentation on emergency preparedness and uh, we'll take business from the floor. We have a resolution and then a few announcements to make. So that's the agenda for this evening. If I could have a motion to accept, moved by Cindy, second by Edward, all in favor? All right, thank you. All right, uh, as we have traditionally done, we've asked for, well, I'm going to ask for a moment of silence uh, for the members that we have lost since the last general meeting. We do have a cancellation protocol for uh, losses, um, but today, tonight is our regular scheduled um, date and location, but uh, I, we still want to observe a moment of silence for the members that we've lost since our last general meeting. So we'll, we'll observe that now. All right, thank you. On behalf of myself and council, we extend our condolences to all those who have been affected by loss in the last couple months. So just a matter of record, uh, Tim, uh, Jackie, and Julie are not able to join us this evening. They're all out. I do want to acknowledge that uh, this evening is our first general meeting of 2023 as well. Uh, this is the first uh, general meeting for uh, Chief Larry King, who was recently sworn in uh, to with filling a seat and a vacancy here in the District of Ganadigo. So welcome to you, uh, Larry. And Thank you uh, for the community and joining us this evening and, and welcoming him to his first meeting and our first meeting of 2023. So I'll, I'll read through the rules of order. So again, we are here at the general meeting of February 23rd. We begin at 6 p.m., go to about 8 p.m. If the meeting continues to go further than that, we'll take a time check and see where we're at on the uh, discussion items. This is a public forum, so we will not deal with personal issues in this forum, and the, the, the meeting is delivered in a hybrid as well. We have people, uh, nobody joining us right now on Zoom, but we may have some later. It is being recorded as well, so we do have the camera set up, the camera here in front of, on my laptop. So if we uh, we don't, um, if you don't want to be recorded, please, there's the, the site line of sight, as you can see, uh, it is there, and Again, this is a public meeting, so personal issues will not be dealt with in this form. What we will do is make a make a we'll have a one on one conversation uh, with you about uh, personal issues that you want to discuss as well. Um, this is uh, because it is a public forum. We ask that you please not identify people that are not here. I'm specifically, wanting to talk about you know uh, somebody within the MCA or service delivery, what have you, don't use first names. This is a public uh, forum as well, and it's not fair to them for their privacy. We ask that your questions please remain on point to our what our discussion item is. Uh, so we'll go along uh, the agenda tonight. We have two presentations and business from the floor. If you have a question, uh, please raise your hand. Those of you that are online as well, use the raise hand function or unmute and indicate you'd like to ask a question. I will uh, make a list of people who are going to ask questions and I'll call upon you to ask your question in, in an order. As well, uh, we ask that um, everybody remain respectful uh, in, the, in, in the community meeting here and online. Um, we are all here to receive information, dialogue, um, with the community, and uh, we ask that everybody please remain respectful at all times. Issues that cannot be dealt with uh, here or that need follow-up, we, we, we mark them in the record and we report them back as the follow-up from the previous general meeting, so we'll make a list of those items that we either can't use, we can't, uh, we don't have an answer for, or that we have to go back and look uh, for additional information. We report that back uh, to you uh, every month in the follow-up action item, so that's the rules of order for this evening's uh, general meeting. And I see that uh, Chief Julie has joined us as well. She is online. Unfortunately, she's uh, out sick, so we'll be joining uh, online or is sick at the moment, but has joined online. 
So just an action item from the, the, the December uh, 1st uh, general meeting, um, which is in the packages that you have, is just the Dundee money that was received in January 2020. How much did we gain or lose? And that, since that money has been received, so the, the answer is that uh, there's been a loss on that money because of the, the uh, markets being really bad. It was a $600,000 loss, but we uh, anticipate with the... Um, with the markets uh, getting better, that that will quickly be uh, recovered. Unfortunately, that's how the markets work at this time. So that's the, uh, that's the current status uh, of the funding. So we're gonna start with our first uh, presentation this evening. We're joined by two folks from the Office of Vital Statistics. Uh, we have Juan Paul and Tina. Uh, Mitchell is joining us to walk us through the first presentation uh, of this evening. So I'll call upon you. Yes. Okay, so we have our presentation uh, pulled up here. The background on Block One Lens begins like this. On November 25th, 2020, Canada returned the Block 1 lands to the Mohawks of Akwazasne. The return of these lands was part of the Seaway claim. The Seaway claim has not yet been settled, and settlement terms will be brought to the community at a later date by council for approval. And just We just wanted to note that if the Seaway claim settlement agreement is not accepted by the community, the block one lands will remain as part of the uh, Aquasas name. OVS was tasked with administrating the allotment of block one lands only. A position was created and filled. A working group was established. All research on block one lands was reviewed and updated. A work plan was created for the world rollout of the community and presented to council. Council approved the work plan on October 3rd, 2022. Block one lands, it consists of 100 plus parcels, all located on Cornwall Island and eight different areas of Cornwall Island. We would have the railroad lands north, railroad lands south, south shore west, shore, south shore central, south shore east, north shore west, north shore central, and Easterbrook sub subdivision. Three rollout areas have been identified and grouped together for community notice. Sounds like we're in This is our pretty map of the block one area. Yeah. Okay, so on the, on the flip side of your map, everybody's got a copy of this. So on the flip side of your colored map is another map. Okay, don't mind flipping that over. Okay, my first rollout would have been here. This is North uh, Railroad Lands North and Railroad Lands South, and it connects from Bizawa Danny Road all the way down to Recreation Road. This right here is your corridor and the International Road. That was the first rollout we had done. Uh, our second rollout is the South Shore West, South Shore, and this one too. So there's one here and then one here, it comes out. And our South Shore Central, 
Yep. And then the South Shore, these would be one here, and then over here along um, Lighthouse Road. Yep. So that was our second rollout, which ended on December, no, February 21st. And then our third rollout, which went out February 21st and will end on March 24th, which is a Friday, is the North Shore, North Shore Central, North Shore West. This is North Shore West. This is North Shore Central. And then we have the Easterbrook subdivision that also went out. So next, next slide, please. Well, this is what our community notices are. So notice is what had appeared and will continue, have continued in the newspaper, the MCR website and social media. So those are our initial rollouts. Our third rollout post was February 21st, which did happen. And it will, the 30 days will expire on March 24th, 2023. Additional one-on-one -on -one meetings held with OVS staff. Our allotment process, MCR is prepared. Council approval obtained submission for registration for four weeks. Indigenous Service Canada is registers issues a certificate of, of possession and will return to the Office of Vital Statistics eight weeks at a maximum. So we're looking at hopefully after 12 weeks, everybody will have their certificate of possession. Next, please. Ongoing, in the event that an allotment can't take place, will be brought forward to a later date. Example, surveys, questions, disputes, estate. The allotment process will continue until all allotments of block one lands have been made. This ATR addition to reserve allotment process is new. We have never had an ATR land return to us and it that has required allotments to take place. Changes to the process are likely, so please bear with us and be patient. Okay, questions. So all this land here was just given back, like there's no, you know, like, oh, we'll give you this land back, what do you want to do that? Um, like that kind of speculation? No. No, so it's just being given out and you didn't have to pay for it? No. This is part of the Seaway claim. Yeah. This has been going on for years. The information package, background information in there for you to read. That way, all your questions will be answered if you read the background information. It'll tell you when it started and up to now what we are doing now. Essentially, the land was either <clears throat> expropriated, well, it's all been expropriated during the construction of the, the Seaway. So the and lots of those parts were either um, parts of Cornwall Island that were taken to make the room for the seaway, and then the, the the bank areas that were left was part of the expropriation that that occurred. The land in it itself has always been treated as our own, but technically the title to it was under uh, Canada's title, and so they we we went through the additions to reserve process and turned it back. But what has happened though? Is that people occupy those lands? They treat it as their own, but they don't have certificates of possession. So when she's talked about the rollout phases, those rollout phases are returning, giving the certificates of possessions to those owners now. And is the land clean? Like it's not being loaded or anything? It's part of the additions to reserve process, which took about twenty years. There's been a number of uh, environmental assessments done, and there has been uh, mediation work has been done, mitigation work, sorry. So there has been environmental cleanups in all those areas. Any other questions on this? Okay. So if there are other questions, uh, she said there's some more background information uh, on a couple pages here that's being shared with you, a bit more of the background history of the uh, how these lands came to be. Uh, and then the presentation talks about the process. Um, Fawn and Tina and their team 
are available for people who have additional questions, uh, those who may be in, impacted by this happening as well as part of this process. So we wanted, we wanted to make sure that we're sharing this information broadly in a community session like this with you uh, to just keep you updated as this process unfolds. There is one more, um, I didn't submit it into the presentation, I apologize, I had done it like last minute, but there is one more on the back of your um, information packet, and it's given you just a basic rundown of where we are with railway lands, how many I rolled out, how many will be surveyed, how many are need to be surveyed, that's question, MCA lands, how many estates are involved in you know, each area, a mortgage and what is under review, under review currently. So each railway lands, South Shore lands, North Shore lands, and Easterbrook. I had broken them all down for you. So it'll give you a grand total at the, end, at the bottom of the sheet. Okay, take in mind that some of these could be uh, a rollout with a survey or an MCA with a survey or an estate with a survey. So if you're trying to match up all the numbers, it's not going to work because that is what's going, that's what's happening. Okay. I appreciate all your time. Thank you. And uh, yeah, give me a call. Are those lands readily available for members on the island? They are only for adjacent lot land owners. So if I have one land up and it's cut up by the seaway land, you know, and then right in front of me, that's the seaway. That's me. That would go directly to me. So it would be adjacent lot line owners only. So it's getting reverted back to them after all this time. So I've been doing home visits and making phone calls and people are really anxious and really um, happy that it's happening after all this time, especially the elders. So again, thank you for your time. Thank you very much uh, for sharing that information and thank you to both of you for the work you're doing on this uh, project. Okay, we'll now turn to uh, our second presentation of this evening. We have a presentation that uh, Chief Sarah and Chief Cindy will walk us through on the uh, emergency preparedness. And so as uh, Grand Chief had mentioned, the emergency management and response, this is information that we um, collaborated on with response to the current um, or the frequent power outages that we've been having within the community. Next slide. So back from recent outages, power outages are never expected, but we can all benefit from being prepared for them. Keep these important pieces of information handy when planning for yours and your family's safety's work and security during any future outages. Today, we'll review some of the steps that you can take as community member to prepare yourself and your family for future emergencies, as well as responses that we took as council as an organization to ensure that the safety of our members and the next steps towards creating a safer and more prepared community for future emergencies. Whether they are power outages or other types of emergencies, we are here to ensure your safety and protection. So impacts, impacts and definitions. What is a power outage? Extended power outages may impact the whole community and the economy. A power outage is when electrical power goes out unexpectedly. Keyword, unexpectedly. Number two, what are the impacts? Power outage, outages may disrupt communications, water, transportation, close retail businesses, grocery stores, gas stations, ATMs, and other services. Power outages can also cause food spoilage, water contamination, and can also present the use, prevent the use of medical devices. 
Although this does not happen as frequently in the Ontario portion of Akwesasne, these tips and tools are important for emergencies as well. Everyone should be prepared. Protecting yourself and your family during an outage. So these are some tips that we, we compiled uh, with regards, and, and I'm sure a lot of this you have heard over, you know, several of the news broadcasts and communication that MCA does on a regular basis. So keep your freezers and refrigerators closed. Use, only use generators outdoors and away from windows. Do not use a gas stove to heat your home. Disconnect appliances and electronics to avoid damage from electrical surges. Use alternate plans for refrigerating medicine or power dependent medical devices. If safe, go to an alternative location for heating or cooling. The MCA opened warming stations in all three districts, reducing them to two locations, including an additional location within the St. Regis Mohawk tribe at the senior center. Food, warmth, games, and assistance were provided at these locations. Finally, check on your neighbors and family members. AMPS did home checks um, on all of the community members. Um, it was really nice to see that um, they did stop at our warm shelters. They came in and checked on the people that were in the shelters. Um, they actually played games with some of the kids. Uh, they help serve meals, so um, it was really nice to have that um, public safety involved in caring for our community. Be, pre be prepared. Okay, be prepared. Sorry, be prepared. Twelve ways to prepare. Sign up for alerts and warnings. Make a plan, save for a rainy day, practice emergency drills, test family communications plans, safeguard your documents, plan with neighbors, make your home safer, know your evacuation routes, assemble or update supplies, get involved in your community, the more that our community is involved, the more we can ensure that all of our community is safe. Document and ensure property. There are many ways to take action and prepare for it before a disaster occurs. These actions on this card include some of the most important ways to help yourself, your family, and your community to increase your preparedness. Simple actions at your home and in your neighborhood can make a big difference. Next slide. So be prepared for up to 72 hours. And I think that's something that we've all learned through uh, history that we need to be prepared. So have having the basic things you will need for at least 24 to 36 hours is a great place to start. But having a kit prepared for 72 hours will not only ensure not only your safety, but your families as well. Ensure you have a plan for communicating with extended family members to check on your neighbors, especially those who are vulnerable, such as our elders and those living alone. And I think an important thing that we didn't really focus on here is our pets. And that was a big issue when uh, we had some of the warming stations because we did we did have a couple dogs come into the facility and it was really nice for the children. And it was just a nice change of, um, I guess, a good stress reliever. So I think it's important that we remember our pets. And Sarah? Good evening. Um, I'm going to discuss the Mohawk Council's response and steps and efforts are taken to ensure the safety of Akwazaslono. Mohawk Council of Akwazaslono has worked hard to ensure those who needed support received it during the power outages. Warming stations were open after three hours of no power on Thursday. They were initially located at the Gisnaina School, Gonadugu School, and Gawanoge Recreation. The Gowanoge Recreation closed following zero community members in attendance on Friday at 10 p.m. 
Supplies were moved to Ganadugo School. Ganadugo School remained open Friday and Saturday, but closed and moved to the senior center in Hogansburg due to the generation, the generator malfunctioned. Gisnaina School closed on Friday due to heating issues and moved to the senior center as well. This is an issue that has been identified as an immediate need and council and Department of Infrastructure are working on a plan to ensure the facilities are all prepared for future outages. We coordinated with the San Regis Mohawk Tribe Emergency Management Office and worked with them. They have an agreement with the American Red Cross for shelter management. And then the San Regis Mohawk Tribe, along with some members of council, we opened up the um, St. Regis Mohawk School. And at the senior center, there was uh, food that was provided by our local businesses, tables, and they had chairs for seating and warmth. They also provided um, food and um, also provided food to our members that were at the Comfort Inn, Casino, and Turtles, Turtles Nest at the old um, Wolf Clan. The casino also provided meals to our members who are staying at the hotel and at Comfort Inn. We are extremely thankful for their support and their instant willingness to help us when we were in need. Hotel accommodations were made at the Turtle's Nest where meals were also provided. We are extremely grateful for their willing willingness to help us. Nyawagoa. Food was also provided by Sny Life Convenience Store which was extremely grateful for the help and willingness to assist those in need. Nyawagoa. Games were brought into the Senior Center in Hogansburg to help entertain families who arrived. Aquasus and police, police officers played games with the children at Ganadigo School Warming Station and helped ease the stress and boredom of families at the Warming Center. This was above and beyond effort that was greatly appreciated. The Canadian Red Cross was also contacted. This is a relationship that we will work to build to develop future plans of action for any upcoming emergency situations we should have in the future. The executive director created an emergency response team to execute, to execute leadership consists of directors, associate directors, program managers, and public safety officials, and work quickly with them to develop the steps to be taken throughout the power outage. Her leadership also ensured the efficient communication to council, which was used to ensure the safety of all of our members. We want to take a moment to recognize their hard work and dedication to support in the community during this difficult time and to the organization. We appreciate all of you. Our local businesses were a big part of this successful effort in meeting the needs of our community. We all want Okay, currently actions are being taken. Um, the shelters and warming centers, we recognize that generators, the location of the generators at the identified warming centers are not up to par. Our Department of Infrastructure and Housing Environment team is looking to ensure all of the identified shelter locations have the appropriate generators specific to the size of the building. At the sanitary conditions are prepared to meet your basic hygiene needs things like showers, bathrooms, sinks, et cetera. Vulnerable, a coordinated effort between the Department of Health and DCSS has taken place where a list of the vulnerable members will be placed into a database. This will allow for our emergency response teams such as Aquasus and Mohawk Police, Ambulance, Fire Department to quickly respond and for our healthcare workers to know the immediate needs of our members. If you know anyone who should be on this list, we encourage them to call our to call or for them to be added at our Mohawk government office, 613-575-2250, extension 2162. Additionally, the work is underway with Hydro Quebec to ensure proper preventive measures are in place regarding vegetation overgrowth. You will see them throughout the Quebec portion of Aquasasna trimming trees and other vegetation to prevent future outages. We ask that our members be patient as they complete this long overdue work and that you are understanding of any trees that require trimming where they are too close to the power lines. As we all know, a simple branch falling on a line can cause hours of worth of loss. We will continue to work with Quebec Hydro, Quebec Hydro to find solutions that will benefit our community and develop plans of action for potential areas of negotiation and relationship building. 
as a council, our commitment to the protection of our members' health and well-being as a, remain a top priority. And as such, we have committed to see our emergency response processes improve and increase our knowledge and understanding of emergency management. We are committed to improving ourselves and our processes for the safety and protection of our members. So here's some uh, emergency contact numbers. So you're free to take a picture of them, add them to your phones or phone lists. These were also provided in the tri-fold pamphlet handed out during the check distribution. We also have more here tonight. In addition to these important numbers, you can always reach out to your district chiefs for additional information and direction on who to contact. Our Mohawk, our Mohawk government staff are also here to direct your calls and get in touch with the people you and programs you need. Nyongo, any questions? Yes, we'll go over here. Go ahead. Years and years and years, power has been all. And years and years and years, people come to meetings and suggest to you all, well, let's do this, let's make our own power, let's you know, generate our own power. How come it never happens? What, what's, what's the big thing? You know, when these people went out and they did that, these people got generators. And how come you stand for that for community? I know the people that um, were handing out those generators, they wrote a grant to receive those generators from um, a private individual. And so he allocated X amount of generators that are um, small ones, you know, that you can just, yeah, they just to keep the, yeah. We, we're currently looking at those different mitigation measures. You ask us for suggestions, we give you suggestions, and you just go over your head. Yeah. So there was a pro. There is a there is a program that housing has been doing on that as well. That they put a call out for for elders and um, community members that um, would like to have a generator put in their home. I know that that initiative. I think did twelve, ten, or twelve of them. We are looking at additional allocation for that. I mean, the the challenge around generators, right? I mean, it's a it's a short term, you know. So the, that short-term fix to, you know, the, the outage at the time, right? The, the concern with that too, though, is, is that, you know, if we buy a hundred generators, right, that means there's a hundred generators that somebody had to service. There's hundred generators that have to be hooked up, you know, so that it helps for the right at the immediate, but, you know, some of the stuff that uh, we are doing is looking at what is the long-term, right? Because that's the thing, though, you start off at the downfall. Mm -hmm. Never the downfall. We'll yeah we are looking at what some technical options may be for an alternate uh source of power at the time of outage like you said right i mean because we could bring we we theoretically could bring a generator in that's half the size of this room right but it needs some way to be connected into either homes or the system, right? So those those things, you know, we, we are exploring what some of those options may be. But sure. Um, just to add to that, January 26th, I have a holiday on situation was happening. I did a little research. I started um, writing a proposal. So I would like to just present it to you and kind of speaks to a lot of the stuff that um, you're talking about with all the different sizes of generators, the walks and the capacity. And you're right, it is a lengthy process. And you know, when you get down to the nitty gritty of uh, understanding the electric side of it. So the industrial commercial size um, generators that could be purchased, uh, I just put together a presentation. Um, and I went into a little bit of the hydrogen back. I did a lot of background research on that side of it too. Um, so I just want to leave this with you to, um, if you get a chance to take a look at it with uh, extensive community resources also. Um, and I'm, I'm never going to stop park, parking on the $2.3 million sitting there in Enbridge that there's a possibility that they can lose that at 
possibly use this word solution of what's being proposed in here. I'm not saying we've got to empty the bank there, but that money is uh, identified and will be brought back into the community to use. Um, so I just want to leave this with you. Um, and um, if you get a chance, I have a PowerPoint that I can email to use also that speaks to all of that. Uh, I started researching on it. Um, I do know that um, the elders that are being service, uh, they're starting to do it now with uh, generators for their homes. I believe that a couple of them are very grateful. It's unfortunate that they're having to try to do it like in a really quick way. Something better than nothing, right? And help them uh, the home. Uh, so I just want to do that with you and uh, read it back. You can look at it. Got some ideas in there when we talk about the 40, 50 years of this ongoing um, power outages, <clears throat> causes. We do know it's got a lot to do with infrastructure too, about what is not being changed ever home for many years. They keep going to the wrong. So that's all I have on there. But when we get to um, um, when we get to ask questions, I want to go back to your report. That there's a few things in there when we to ask questions. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, I don't know that. Oh, industrial, not not sure. So the the biggest challenge is right is that the the technical like the physicalness is that the power comes from you know the Dundee area and goes through a very swampy marshy area that and there's only one feed that comes in right so we do have a meeting with uh, the CAO or CEO of of hydro in a couple of weeks and we're going to be talking about. You know, what are these other infrastructure investments that need to be made for either a backup line so that, you know, such something happens, there's another feed coming in or just make, you know, what, what's their plans for investments into upgrading the, 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 the line, right? I mean, so that, that's part of the challenge. But, you know, some of the conversations that we've been having as well is looking at, um, you know, train a local workforce to do some of those repairs, right? Because generally, uh, you know, what happens, and, and this is really unfortunate, you know, the climate change is, is having a huge havoc on us. We get dumps of snow or high winds or, or rain that's, you know, happening really fast and it's happening in a large area. So what happens is that, you know, there's lots of outages for Quebec Hydro and we're, you know, so we're in that list. So if there's a way that we can train a workforce that can go out there and repair it uh, ahead of their crews going around all over the place fixing, you know, that's something we're looking at as well. There was a question over here. Yes. I know the contact center. The very close. I know the time that I was up with Polar and they squashed it. Yeah. But why not do it for MCA? You know, yeah. <clears throat> there is a sonic power. It's a um, solar panel. Mm -hmm. And it, comes, it goes up all by itself and it comes out like a sunflower. And then when the weather gets bad, it pulls itself back up and throws it, and it goes back down. I'm a contact with a company that they started it, originated it overseas, and they finally brought a company to the United States. So I've been working, I've been in contact with this gentleman that has the outfit over in the United States because I want to try it and bring that business here because I've seen it. But that's another option, you know, because one of their their shoulders. I mean, they're not going to want to be solar panel farms. You know, they are quite cheap enough in the long run. But it's beneficial for either of us to Yeah, understand. And then if you bring in the Sina power, then you'd be generating jobs here for us as us. You know, we got to train them. We got to, we're going to have to maintain it. Why not do that here? Instead of going out, yeah, we had a meeting last. We had our <laughs> excuse me. We had our district meeting last night, and uh, I speaking to a few of our elders. They had mentioned that they we were on a New York State power grid before, and it ran down Chapman Road, and it came from St. Regis Road. That everything was fine, and then um, I don't know if there was a meeting with Quebec, and they said, "Well, let's work with Quebec. Um, they'll bring in the infrastructure. The, it'll be cheaper for us." And when they went that route, and I think we've been on that line since 
what he say, 81? 1981, 82. So I don't know if it's some type of agreement we work on to say, well, let's, if we go down, let them be our backup again. It's, there's all kinds of things we can try, you know, like we were on it before. I did it the same up, and I had the same power, and one month, I'm telling you, coming off. Yeah. 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 That was boring. <laughs> you know, so I should realize something that is right Oh, from Quebec when it gets all the way sent up to New York City and it comes back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where the Zenon is being fed. Yep. Yeah, did you have a listener? Um, when you meet the girls, we're talking about um, preparedness. Do you know what's a good idea for your fridge? Do you, you get out like maybe, I don't know, a freezer mm -hmm. bag, a nice size, put <clears throat> the water in, stick it in the freezer, and you can put a couple if you have room. Stick that in your freezer when your collar goes out. You take the one bag and put it in your fridge. You take the other bag in your freezer. Keeps your meats mm -hmm. from for however many long the collar is out. Believe me, I'm fine. Yeah. It works. Yeah. If not, you don't want to do that. Then you dig a hole and make the fridge. If there's snow, you make the fridge out of the snow. And the collar stuff in there and it stays wet. Yeah. No, there's definitely, there's lots of tips that we want to make sure people are are trying or using, right? I mean, obviously there's, you know, there's kind of the medium, short-term and long-term stuff that we're working on and just continues to be, you know, ongoing. Um, and hopefully, you know, that we find, you know, some reasonable solutions, right? The power grid, I mean, the power system of Aqua is, is a is a great, is a good idea conceptually, but it's also quite expensive, right? Because the poles... But the po the the power the, the equipment you know technically belongs to the power company right so so when you when you want to buy all of this there's a price tag for it all right so I mean and unfortunately you know electricity is also regulated we can't tell them they have to sell us power from from Messina to here right so so there, we have to follow the rules that are set out in in regulations and Messina power well you know is is up the road. You know, we have to see how that actual connection can happen and, and feed into the system, right? So those are things we're looking at. If, if there's... Mm -hmm. it, well, there have been, there, the, the Mohawk Council has commissioned studies over the years on what some alternative energy projects or options could be. Uh, they just never been actioned on, right? And of course, these are expensive too, right? So if we were to generate our own power, is that through water, wind turbines, or what have you, um, there are significant investments, right? So that's, I would suspect, probably why none of them have been actioned on. And the other thing is, is, is that, you know, is the, is the, really is the, um, the geographical jurisdictional issues, right? So, but it's not, I'm, we are actively exploring all of the options. I want to jump in. Uh, Based on what I'm hearing, um, I'm not on the agenda, but it kind of could almost be an agenda addition, but I, I want to give some background. Some folks might have heard it before. Some folks hopefully are hearing it for the first time, but especially in response to your, how can we never look into this or that or what have you, including what Cheryl had to offer. So it's a little bit lengthy, but I think I'm hoping you're going to find some of it uh, enlightening especially in our efforts in the past. So I'm gonna start by reminding people of the uh, OPG claim. It is a successful claim. Uh, that's what's making up our uh, community trust right now, 50 million uh, so. And uh, being in Ontario, part, part of what they offered us too, we had, we had a side table besides the, uh, besides the uh, negotiations. We had a, a side table working on uh, relationships going forward and part of that is they offered us uh, expertise in the area of power yeah. oh you, you can ask a question if, if you want I'll, I'll stop okay um this pertains to Goanoga mostly because it's Ontario OPG in Ontario Goanoga plays plays exorbitant amounts of electricity compared to us in Ganadago and Snai 
So we concentrated on that with OPG. And what we did at the time was we did a we did do a uh, uh, alternate uh, power study, alternative power study. It was done by a company. It was a Dutch company. They have uh, offices in Ottawa and uh, Vancouver. I think they're called uh, Swiderski. So we have that that study on file. What they recommended from that, at the end of the day, looking at solar, looking at wind, looking at such a water turbines, they, they recommended biomass. What that is, is basically just a big incinerator. And at the time, Domtar was uh, sizing down. And again, uh, taking advantage of some things we had in place, one just being the North Shore claim, we looked at a possibility and we're starting to show some promise, a, a plot of land there to, to, uh, to accommodate this in, uh, incinerator or, or, or this biomass, biogas, biomass. It made a lot of sense at the time, mind you, this is 15 years ago now, because it creates steam. We could have sold that steam directly to Domtar. It'll burn anything, garbage. Uh, in this case, we're looking at Domtar with their tremendous amount of wood chips. If everybody notices, they got wood chips going out of there all day long. So that could have fed this beast. Garbage. We, we pay a lot for sludge from our water treatment transport. And out. That would feed, that would go directly to this thing. So I had a lot of promise. Why didn't I go anywhere to this day? I, I don't have a good answer for you. It's one of those things that Abram said, we did a lot of things that kind of unfortunately sat on the shelf a little bit, but that was definitely one that uh, had some promise and maybe it still does. Uh, Dom Tar is totally gone now. So uh, whether whether this biomass is still the color or they to be determined. So uh, besides that, um, um, I guess it's, uh, in anticipation of the, uh, uh, the 1796 Treaty in New York claim, we knew that there was nine megawatts of power coming from that. And we have to have, a, we got to get prepared, mind you. We got to get prepared for that. Where that is entirely status of day, day exactly, I'm not totally sure. You got to remember, I just I just came on board here and I'm getting my, my feet wet again. There's nine megawatts of power. So we got to be prepared some way, at least verbally, uh, a vehicle. To, to, to accept that. So we've, we've, done, uh, we've done studies, what we were hoping to achieve at the end of the day, and what we we're working on was the acquisition of power utility. Our own power generated by us, somebody mentioned Messina uh, Electric over there. We sat with Messina Electric many times. They were very open, very given of their, of their time and uh, expertise. They're willing to help us when the time comes. Uh, that is NIPO power, by the way, and yes, it is very cheap, and that's what pisses us off, right? Everybody around us has got cheap power. So we went to task on that, and we, we did uh, quite a few studies, actually, and, and I want to enlighten you on what these, some, some of these studies are to make, to make sense of what I'm saying more so. Uh, feasibility studies, absolutely, positively have to be done. Uh, they last about five years, so we're probably going to need to do some new feasibility studies. Mind you, this is in collaboration with the uh, Seminole Mohawk Tribe now and the Mohawk Nation Council of Chiefs because it started under the umbrella of the New York claim. Uh, I approached the the, the Seminole Mohawk Chiefs uh, just last week. They are all on board and in favor of, of what I'm going to present uh, more so in a little while. So here's a, here's some of the studies that were done. Okay, we did a we did a, had a study by a. Jettis Consultant Incorporated. It was, this was going back to August in uh, 2001. It's a feasibility study and it, and it was based on the acceptable options for the supply of electricity to the territory of Akwazasana. We had another study by Lowe, Gravel and Associates. It, there's a, there are engineering design services. They looked at the technical assessment of the state and residual value of existing infrastructure. Uh, Abram referred to that earlier. Uh, this is going to be a, a tremendous undertaking. Just to let you know that off the bat, we're probably thinking $100 million. Just keep that in mind, too. So I'll, I'll talk on that a little later. We did another study, Virus Capital. I want you to remember that name because we're looking at them to be on board more so with what we're doing. They did an acquisition in the community ownership slash operation of electrical distribution. Another Virus Capital study. New York, Ontario, Quebec, three-way power transmission interconnection. PowerBud LLP, they did a legal and an administrative assessment on the application 
licensing and legal process for establishing a new electricity utility on the territory of Akwazast. So I hope that tells you that we, we, we did some due diligence. We did enough studies. These are expensive studies. Unfortunately, I, I can't say why they weren't acted upon or why they're sitting on a, on a, on a shelf, but I'm dusting them off. And these are the ones that, and we have more. We do have others, but those are kind of important ones. So I, I'll try to get through this a little bit quicker. So what, we, what we're trying to do in immediate is to get back on task with this uh, committee. And uh, we'll be doing a proposal, maybe even a presentation in uh, due order, maybe at a general meeting. I, I, got, I need to present to my own council as well. So we're working on this and I've been working on this with uh, Jim Ransom. Jim and I work together a lot, a lot under the New York claim. Jim, Jim is very, uh, very astute when it comes to electricity. So we, we touch base and we both agreed, yes, let's get back on this thing. Let's get back on this task. Let's start fanning the flames back on uh, having our own utility, acquisition and power utility. So that's what we've been doing. That's kind of what I've been doing since I got back. I've been really uh, doing a lot of reading and all, all of the above. So what we anticipate that being made up of is a, a lawyer, uh, an environmentalist, uh, engineer, and probably a few people who are going to know about electricity in general. And we have all those bases covered with Aquas Arcelona. So that would be a working committee and, we, and we're looking at the possibility of a, of a, of a coordinator and an office and staff people. We did this with OPG. The same principle, why create the wheel is effective. Some of it, let's redo it, let's, let's continue on. We already got the wherewithal and how and all that kind of stuff. So we're kind of, it's our own work. We're not copying anybody but ourselves. So I got to present that to my chiefs here uh, in, uh, in the near future, because it's gonna, we're gonna be calling on uh, finances to, to contribute toward this endeavor, both uh, MCA as well and uh, St. Regis Mark Tribe. Like I said, they're on board. They are supportive of the idea to get back on track with this. So, um, I don't want to take up too much time. Like I said, I want to do a better job of a presentation with uh, slides and the whole gamut. But uh, there's another thing that I wanted to uh, to allude to based on what Cheryl presented too. So for Cheryl's information, uh, oh, oh, before I forget, um, GM has recently come up for sale. Now people might turn their nose at that because we know it's contaminated, but it is in the final stages of uh, cleanup. And it just came up for sale last week. During the New York claim uh, negotiations, we tried to achieve a right of first refusal if GM or Reynolds ever came up for sale. They couldn't grant us that, but they insisted that we would get equal opportunity than anybody else. It's not just something that they put all across the, the country. It's something they, they're, they're, they're looking at certain uh, companies or certain whatever criteria to, to, to go into this particular space. So we, we're not gonna get thrown out uh, at the get go. So we're in the door on that one. We're looking into it, just, uh, just observing. And if anybody wants to look into that further, uh, you can Google, that's how I found it. It's called Racer Messina GM Property. Racer Messina GM Property will tell you what's going on there, what they're looking at, and all the above. And, and uh, it made sense to us back in the day, and it makes sense to us still. It's a possible site for what, what we're talking about. And I guess uh, Abram talked about uh, short-term, mid-term. I think what I'm alluding to here is kind of kind of long-term kind of stuff. It's going to take some time. Take some tremendous amount of finances, but we gotta we gotta start somewhere, right? <clears throat> uh, there is another project that we've been keeping tabs on. Uh, it's uh, it's in uh, Six Nations. Uh, it's in collaboration with Six Nations Development Corporation, and uh, what it is, it's a it's a massive battery storage project. It's a 250 megawatt Tesla Megapack system. That's what it's called. Uh, it's, actually, it's actually called the Oneida Energy Storage Project. And you can find out more information of that by Googling <laughs> NRSTOR, 
dot com. N R S T O R dot com. What that is, finding out more about that again, it's it's a uh, it's part and parcel of uh, the Natural Resources of Canada announced nine hundred and sixty four million dollars. Uh, it's a program to support smart renewable energy, and this project is getting fifty million of that. So I've already made contact with Six Nations. I made contact with the Office of Natural Resources Canada. My first words to him was that we are in a we are in a state of emergency insofar as our power goes. I believe we still are, if I'm not mistaken. Sort of, kind of, sort of. Not, not so much that, but we were. So I try to get in that door, right? And at least get a, get a phone call back. Uh, I talked to a lower level person that hopefully I'll get a call back. We can have some good dialogue around seeing if we can access some of that funded. So like I said, I got more written down, but I don't want to commandeer the whole uh, the whole agenda here. But rest assured, we, we did our we did a lot of work already. We, we want to make, we got to make use of these studies that are already done. And uh, I agree with you totally. It's time we start thinking of our own power, our own utility. In our, in our uh, guesstimation, I use that word uh, cautiously, it's going to cost upwards of a minimum of $100 million. If we can get, of course, now is our job as chiefs is to find some of that uh, input, right? It's probably going to be uh, about a 25% reduction for every household, 25%. That's, that's significant. But it's also, uh, it's also a uh, economic venture. It's, it's guesstimated that in 30 years, we're probably looking at $200 million plus. So all those things combined, power, our own power in an environment uh, uh, economic engine. So it's got, it's got, you know, makes sense that we at least uh, explore the hell out of it. So that's what I've been doing. Pregnant. Thank you. Carol, you had a question and then we'll go over here. So I forget, forget. In the proposal, you talked about the long-term strategy, short-term. Well, it's a well-known fact that the community wants immediate action. Yeah. So I'm proposing that uh, council, you have a form of committee, form of committee, or whoever's looking into this, to look at the uh, commercial generators run by diesel. Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned earlier, Brad Chief, um, we would also have to look at how they connect with the our range and how we're trying to generate enough power to the homes. These commercial generators that are in the package that are shown to Icon, the Canadian company out of Ontario, also. It caught me back, but I missed the guy's call. I just wanted to explain to the guy about the size of the community. I also have the housing statistics in there of the uh, two districts uh, in the proposal that I left with you guys. Uh, so I'm proposing that a committee, whoever it is, look at some type of solution within 90 to 120 days to come up with something to bring back to the community based on, uh, I'm not saying it has to be a million dollars investment. But at the end of the day, it's three or four hundred or five hundred thousand dollar investment for the districts based on commercial generators. That commercial generators last anywhere between twenty to twenty five years based on upper maintenance. And somebody mentioned job opportunities. Uh, we're forever talking in the education realm that um, where we need to start sending our young off to uh, get new careers in. You got guys that are involved with this um, FTT project right now. With, about four or five natives that are involved with that put those those lines into the ground. I see them every day up here, different parts of the territory. Now's the time to start talking to the youth about getting them out there. They become lines. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lines in their portion, but um, um, national grid. National grid. We've got a couple of them over there. I think two or three that are from the territory that work for national grid as lines. Group. At the end of the day, don't look at any of those kind of um, um, jobs out there for our people. Um, when we get to open uh, open business, um, your report that you sent out that was covering November and December, uh, it leads to a lot of questions I have. So I'm just going to wait till the end for anybody else to come. Okay, so. thank you. Go ahead, we'll go over here. <clears throat> Now, this is going towards everything that guys have presented 
what you will be presenting. And I hope that this, what I will be saying, will put off like it'll tie in with everything you said in the podcast. So I'm presenting this resolution. <laughs> So I'm presenting this resolution so that there can be a vote on this here tonight. I may not know proper protocol for this, so I will do my best. I may need assistance from council. Having said that, here is the resolution. Proposed resolution to the Mohawk Council of Officers. Whereas the Mohawk Council of Bankwazasana recognizes the hardship experienced by members by frequent power outages. And whereas our mission statement said, create sustainable partnerships and building a strong community for future generations. We therefore commit to the development of a long-term strategic plan to combat the 100% reliance on hydro Quebec and reduce impacts, emotional, physical, psychological, and economic, put upon our peoples by electric power technology. Furthermore, the long-term strategic plan shall include, but not be limited to, are the development of a working group composed of relevant individuals technically trained with the skills necessary to successfully design the strategic plan. This group shall be presented to the community one month from this date, February 23rd, 2023, which is the signing of this resolution. I, I, this group will perform a feasible study, looking at all potential concepts to determine what is the best fit for Alphonsus. In particular, G. Snyder and Ganadigo, who are most affected by this. I, I, I. This group will outline costs and shall include lobbying strategies and or other approaches to access required funding. Finally, Council will introduce the working group to the community one month from the signing of this resolution, provide monthly updates on their progress, and set a finite date for the adoption and implementation of this plan one year from the official formation of this working group. Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have amendments? I would like to make a motion to vote. Can I get a seconder to agree to ask for a vote? Now, uh, so just to clarify, um, do you as the city council vote on this proposed resolution here and now, or do we as community members vote on this resolution? So according to the procedural regulations that we operate our council meetings, our community meetings under, motions uh, can only be presented by members of council. If, they, the, if there is to be a vote of the community, it would be uh, more of an indication of support of what you have just read. The, the, only, the other way for more formal process is by petition. Then that, that's presented as well by a process where it's accepted and validated. And then that petition, whatever it calls for, then becomes, if it's va if it's validated to meet the threshold as a petition, uh, then becomes a form of a motion that's uh, voted on by council. So for specifically for what you're proposing now, the the I, we can take it as an indication of support of what you have uh, presented, but it is non-binding to council. Okay. 
Um, this is having sat with other community members and having this discussion. This is to help keep um, council. And if a team does get developed, it's to make you accountable and to keep people on a timeline. Because like you all have said, there have been studies done 15, 20 years back. They're all sitting in binders, collecting dust. That's a whole lot of wasted time. And we may have gotten a lot further ahead within our community if there were actual timelines and deadlines and sitting council training potential um, new council coming in to just keep moving forward with all the works that have already been implemented. And it is 2023. And I really, like I'm from the Wenoke and now have moved to the Quebec portion. And so my 20 years of, of experiencing these frequent power outages is beyond my understanding. And I just can't seem to wrap my brain around why nothing has been truly done to solve these issues. Um, can we go? No, no. Could I have? Um, okay. I'll go here, then I'll take the question, and I have one online. Just real quick, with people, yeah. I made a recommendation that members of council um, look to consider her, um, what she put in the form of a, um, basically a resolution, mm -hmm. uh, look for council and somebody to support it. She's asked for the community to vote on gaining her support. I believe that we should at least show a hand who supports her, and then a recommendation mm -hmm. for somebody on council to take the initiative to jump on that and mm -hmm. for MCR. Thank you. Go ahead. If I understood how you um, informed us what the process was, we could now ask one of our council members to move that forward, uh, make a motion and move that forward as a resolution, a formal resolution. Yes, but it'll have to go through the process. So what it would we essentially have proposed what you have proposed is language, and then we'll take it back, and the member of council will have to present it to you. Council in the form of, you know, an MCR resolution. Well, I mean, it, if it's going to be considered at a community meeting, if you want it to be public, then it'll come back in one month. Otherwise, a member council could bring it to the next council meeting, which is every Monday. It's quite possible. If a member of council would champion it, then yes. Can I get a commitment from our council members to do that? Your hands. Thank you. Thank you. I have uh, I have a question online. We'll go to you. Thank you. As a SNI district member, I do have a small amendment to that. Can you remove psychological damage? I don't think I'm psychologically damaged by the the impacts of it. I understand and agree with the amendment and the purpose of it. Um, I'm just kind of sitting here laughing a little bit to myself and. It may just be because I've lived my entire 30, oh God, uh, eight, <laughs> eight years here that it doesn't, um, I don't know, an outage is an outage to me. I'm used to it. I've grown up with it. Um, you know, I understand that for those who haven't lived on the Quebec uh, grid their entire life, it's, it is a bit of a shock to get used to. And it does have some, you know, there are some real, very real impacts that do need to be considered for the community. Um, my other one is just maybe um, um, I would agree with the monthly updates from council on this as to hearing the progress on it. Um, just in my experience and knowing the Quebec government um, and Quebec hydro issues, um, I would just say that more than likely just to keep community expectations, we're looking like two or three months to secure a meeting with the higher ups that you need at the um, those meetings, <clears throat> Quebec Hydro tends to operate like Ontario. They will send the low level guys to the first meeting and then the next meeting is a little bit higher up. And then the next one is usually the third or fourth one is the person that you need to actually make the decisions. Um, so I just like, I would like to hear the monthly updates and reports on the progress as to this. 
Um, just trying to tame expectations a little bit, though, just based in uh, my experience. Thank you. Thank you for that. Go ahead. In regards to the insects, to, um, to speak to psychological, psychological impact, some people may be more resilient than others. Mm -hmm. However, um, other people um, have uh, like PTSD reaction to it. All of a sudden, the, uh, the lights are going low, mm -hmm. and, and then they're getting brighter. All of a sudden, the car is going to go out. Immediately, the stress builds up, and then you have to just look at how much have to get everything ready. Because yep. you don't know the power is going to go out in 30 minutes, or it's going to go out in two days. Yep. And I am almost 60 years old. I have a problem coming in my age. It's, <laughs> it is what it is. And um, I went through the uh, the power outage when we had the ice storm. I grew up without power, grew up without water. I've lived a sustainable life. Okay. So I know we're in, we are a resilient people, but I just I, we're just we just want it to stop now. And uh, I don't mean to put anybody to make anybody feel uncomfortable. With the term psychological, but I would ask, I would ask you today because it is in fact a reality for some people, <laughs> not for everyone. Yeah. And in regards to the time frames that we have outlined on the uh, from Hope Revolution, I don't think that it sets up anybody for un um, for um, unrealistic goals or expectations. Because we're saying in one year's time, we want to know what have you looked at? What's feasible? What's not feasible now, but maybe feasible later. That's, you know, so I think that's realistic. It doesn't mean that everything is going to come into communication at that time. So, um, the other thing uh, I wanted to say is I don't want to look at, when you look at your working group, formation of a working group. I'd like to see it be open to like uh, people who use mint. How do they do that? How do they use water? Because we, you know, that's another energy, uh, substantial energy source. Um, there's a whole lot of things out there, and I'm not an expert in it, but um, I think we should have some people that are. We have to have people that also work on the wind farms. They um, they put those winds from our wind mills up and they maintain the uh, that. I don't know a lot about that, but we're and I think we probably have a lot of uh, potential sites too. Um, anyway, I'm yeah. just <clears throat> no, thank I appreciate that. Thank you very much uh, for your comments on that. And the members have heard what both of you have to say. And I do, you know, and I think that the psychological can be obviously analyzed in one way or the other. But I can definitely tell you that, you know, specifically like today, we're supposed to have a big storm. Thank goodness we didn't, right? That's really, you know, people start getting all anxious about it, which is a psychological, you know, impact to people. So definitely hear what you're, what you're, what you're, um, what you have to offer then. Yes. Uh, I just want to make a few comments. Oh, oh say, so yeah, I'll go. I'll wait. I saw your hand up there. Go okay. ahead. I have to share what I'm with generators and all that. Check generator. Mm -hmm. Especially for those elders that need it for sugar mm -hmm. and stuff like that. For $8,000, mm -hmm. that's to have the machine and to have it installed. Eight grand. And once the power goes out, that's not the sound within a second. And that's the best thing on a big for these dollars that we need it at this time. You know, if you want to try to help me resolve something right now, I think that's one of your best alternatives. That way, you're not going out buying 200 generators where everybody's going to turn around and sell it. You know damn well they're going to do that. Yeah. So if you do generate, it hooks right up to the house. It goes right into the power. It, it's um, fueled by the coffee or your fuel or you know whatever but the generator is the best alternative I see you know instead it is eight thousand dollars per house I checked into it you can buy it at Home Depot mm -hmm. but you still have to have the generator gentleman come from Montreal to pick up 
And so it's better just to buy it directly from general instead of what matter. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead, Larry. Yeah, just a few comments. Uh, hope you can appreciate me saying it in public rather than behind closed doors, as the saying goes. But uh, I just wanted to comment and check. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but a part and parcel of uh, the presentation of a resolution at a meeting, my understanding is that it also has to be announced if there's going to be a vote of any kind at a at a general meeting or any meeting. There has to be a, a, a announcement at a duly convened meeting. So it would have had to have been advertised, promoted, what have you, that a vote was going to take place. Just just food for thought. This, um, this was right at the um, time. And our, our OK, thank you. I, want, I wanted to just add a, a few things, too. Um, I guess uh, the way I look at it, on on the on the faces that is kind of like a duplication of what of what I just mentioned maybe. Uh, yeah, I understand that, but still, I mean, uh, we we do have. I mean, what? Well, let's say this way. I mean, uh, it's not like we we didn't do anything. It's not like we dropped the ball. Absolutely, we, we're community members too. You know, we lived through it. I was out at my house. We lived through it. So. Rest assured, we, we we put our nose to the grindstone. It, it was front burner stuff at our at our discussions at our council meetings. As far as reporting, I, I agree, and maybe it can be done because we also have established uh, mechanisms to do that. You talked about the district meeting; that's a monthly thing. The general meeting is a monthly thing. That can that can be the vehicle to 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 give updates because we are going to be uh, working a little bit more closely and more solid about uh, dealing with this. Uh, whether it's the Generac, uh, I have done some uh, some uh, investigating or whatever you want to call it, and it sounds like Kohler is the better option. I, I say that I don't have permission to use the name, but an individual that I know very well had a Generac that had a lot of troubles, and it was actually the person, the, the company that sold it to this person said, "Well, we're going to take that up, and we're going to give you a Kohler." Because it's a better model, so take this for its worth. But yeah, that's that's all I want. I just want to make that clear. You know, we do have the mechanisms in place already to to have that dialogue and to present. Hopefully, at uh, once a month, duly convened meetings, what have you. So, uh, I just uh, say maybe loosely, it is a duplication of what I just presented. Okay, thank Since you. Yeah. We'll go here first, and then we'll go to the other two. Yeah. About biomass, you had mentioned wind farms. I worked at OPG and they already had done feasibility studies mm -hmm. for wind farms. They only want the option mm -hmm. it became too expensive to get rid of it. And we, uh, you mentioned biomass, they have biomass in the lemon all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be an option, however. I believe the world is going emissions free by 2030 yeah. or something like That's that. Like a battery thing. So all of the feasibility studies would have to be completed so that they could find the yeah. actual quantity of um, yeah. Yeah, I'll come back. yeah, it's not as attractive, right? Because I mentioned Domtar earlier. It made a lot of sense when Domtar was still in business. It's probably not as attractive now, biomass. But we do have studies that touched on wind solar and water turbines as well. The winds were out of the question because we, we are in a valley. And I think the way it was said to simplify it was to take advantage of the thermals that, that have to be captured to make wind it has to be above the top of the existing bridge, higher than that. So wind is out of the question for us too. We can go here and then we'll go back to uh, in the back. Okay, just a bit again, it does not matter that it may seem sound like a uh, duplication. Duplication. duplication of what mm -hmm. you're stating. Mm -hmm. What are we, we are looking for accountability. We are community members. We are that's We want it written down. And we as community members just want to just hold everyone accountable. And to see all of these works done in a timely fashion because Five years from now, I have the same conversation yeah. happening. I don't want to see it. Community members don't want to see it. They brought up a lot of frustration. So now we are just asking 
part of the county plan. That's the key word. And that's why there's timelines that are being requested. And that can all easily come into your um, grander presentation, <laughs> which is going to make official for the next um, yeah. people. You know, yeah. go here and then we'll go. Yep, no, nope. go ahead, Charlie. <laughs> no, he's saying that and that people haven't done it and that people aren't working and that people have not prepared. We know you are. Okay, we know you. What we're trying, trying to do is we're trying to engage the EUA with a contract. This is the outline for the contract, and this is what we expect from the contract in return. Mm. And in a way, it, it sets all the perimeters. So it makes it easier also to accomplish tasks because you know you're working within the perimeters. Okay? And you're not, uh, and it, it, it's okay if the committee doesn't work. It's okay if uh, there's another form of energy source that does work. But this group has to be able to say, okay, we looked at it, so, and these are the reasons why. You know, the positive ways that it would work, and these are the ways that it won't work, and why it's not a benefit for us, or it is a benefit. So all of uh, all of these people are contributing different um, um, information on different things, which is good. But it's better to have it all in one condensed, all together in one format, and then you can see that it all this works, this doesn't work, or you know, for this group. This group is also going to look at. Ways to to um to access funds. So if you need funds to further uh, look at a feature, you can even find a way to do it. Only if there is a dispute and find out how to do it. Are you going to require to do that? They have the resources for it. What if we call this an emergency? What if we call it an emergency situation? Can we do that? You know how they do that in the state? A declaration of emergency. State of emergency. Yeah. Can we do yeah. that? Yes. <laughs> and what is the cost for that? And what does it get up? Those things, you know, I'm asking right yeah. now. This is what some of the stuff things they will look at and explore yeah. options and report back. Yeah, understood. That tree. That tree. Well, I should have to pay too. Maybe they have to pay, or maybe they have to do the whole bunch of research. I don't know. No, thank you. you. Yep, yeah, no, I appreciate you explaining it. It's so it's also, in 1998, with the ice storm happened, I, I collect all the information in there about just how much I really bet I would pay out the millions to take care of what was damaged in the ice storm of 98 with their lines. And I cite a bunch of work, things like that, a bunch of numbers in there. But um, I believe March 10th might be the deadline for the community trust. So every card carrying band council member, that's our money. That's your money if you carry that card. Somebody should be working on a proposal to try to secure, even in the interim, if we go to commercial diesel fuel, whatever it takes to put one in the districts. If it's two per district or whatever the case may be, somebody should be working to try to secure some of that. Our all our money, and council carrier card members of that trust settlement money. The call I think is, I want to say March tenth, yeah. somewhere around there. I think so. Friday, March tenth of five. Yeah, and so on the council end, I know if a proposal was ready, we probably could take half that information I gave you and uh, use it. To, to the betterment of all of us to look at that the commercial side of diesel. We've got a lot in San Ridges. I even took pictures of we've got uh we've got the homemakers uh, down snide that land there. We have land adjacent to one acre that could belong to I believe the late Mike Lavore Steve brothers or family down there. We council owns that think of strategically where we could put something like that and, and that would fix the problem for next winter because we're still six weeks into winter. Because they may snow that's in April. You know, May looking up in the mountains tightening, and there's still a lot of snow up in May. But anyway, in the interim, by this fall, 
contact with these companies, somebody might have the equipment readily available that we can get it in place for August or September. So we would be ready for it come winter, um, December 2023. Um, so I'm just reading on here a request for access to trust money for interest free loans was discussed. So these loans of interest free um, with the trust money that we discussed possibly consider getting a, an application ready and in there for this pot, this go around, put some of that money aside. And if you have to match anything, you've got the end bridge 2.3 million, you could use the match. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. <laughs> we'll go. We'll go here. Then we're going to move to business to the from the floor. Go ahead. Just want to say I appreciate all the dialogue that is being made as to and uh, frustration levels of all the community members. And I'm a phenomenal resident, and looking at it from the stress level that we all live through when you just see that flicker of the light that. To whether it's going to stay on, the power is going to stay on or not. But I want to say thank you to Melissa. Melissa got this going and she <clears throat> mentioned um, that there needs to be, and I totally agree, there needs to be a short term, a medium term, and a long term plan of all the ideas that have come into the floor today. Um, I, I think that, you know, the the dialogue and the engagement and just talking about funding, where our funds going to come from, you know, and how we, how they're going to be, and the reporting side of it is, um, that's where your frustration level, that, that's where the frustration levels of the community are coming from, because um, there's no information coming back. We're asking, we're asking for, Telling, letting you know what the problem is, and then there's no information about the feedback to us. So if you could put that in your your MCR, yeah. I think that would be a lot of stress for the community. Thank you. In the back here. Um, she was like you're saying. I agree. Uh, council and chief council is need to work to inform the community more. At OBS, we're always looking at, you know, we need to inform the community on our process. We need to inform the community exactly what our duties are. We're administrators, you know, we need to inform. And that's what we're trying to do at OBS, but I think what our community here is saying, you need to, need to inform us more often on what's going on instead of these things here, you know, let us know what you want, you know, what are the little news you are Well, this is how it's going with our uh, power community, you know, that would help. Yeah. You know, put it on Facebook, everybody tell me, don't put it on the number because everybody gets it, and I do it, show it up, you know, recycle it, do it all on Facebook, and you know, everybody's on that dark thing, the computers, everything. Put it out there. Let us be informed. You know, I'm trying to inform people what's going on at Block One Mind by going to their houses. They love it. It's more personal. But they want that information. They want information. You know, we're not just, just I don't know. That's how I feel. That's why we need that information. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Yes, Larry. I I have uh, council has heard an awful lot about the trust in in these deliberations and the issue with the power outages and stuff. But I I just wanted to uh, to reiterate that the trust is set up in such a way that um, there's fifty some odd million dollars there, the result of OPG and Gowanoga Easterbrook claims combined. But it's set up in such a way that you don't touch the principal, you'll 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 deal with the interest. And I believe there's maybe 1.5-ish plus sometimes to deal with. But there is also a mechanism, and, and I and I uh I put this back upon you guys too to say when the time comes, uh you gotta participate in those sessions because they're reaching out occasionally. I'm not sure the last time they did it or when the next time is, but part and parcel of their job is to reach out and get ideas. How are we gonna deal with this fund this year, perhaps? Are, are we gonna 
spend a little bit more on whatever over here. Okay, we heard a lot of this, but it seems like we're going to concentrate here. So you got to participate. And even so, Gigola Stiesel claim that is another avenue, resource possibly, but that's the same thing. You got to participate when the time comes and they're asking for input from the community. It can't be one, two, three people doing it, you know? It should be in droves. You should really take advantage of that opportunity. I mean, mind you, this day today, it's going to be all about power. I know that, but uh, it's still it's still a process that we have to insist and encourage upon the people to participate more so. Thank you. Just yes. a comment to that real quick. A project of this magnitude has to come to the table, though, based on yeah. the structure and complexity of that application. Yeah. We just took a grant writing class at AXA two weeks ago, and it was on that community trust. It's not the easiest for the community to go back to write the proposal. Small projects didn't even uh, be complex, but I'm based on bank accounts and things like that. Mm -hmm. But when we're looking for the immediate solutions to something, and there's a price tag of maybe half a million, <clears throat> we know about the interest, what's set aside, and those surveys that come out every year that dictate what's their priorities in there and what they're looking at for these proposals. Half the time, when they put those in there, our people aren't thinking at the moment to think about all these emergency type situations and make those appointments. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, the lights just pulled back on and it's like everything's not the story. They forgot that they should be making that a priority in the community, connecting it back to the money that are there. This council has every right on our behalf to write these proposals and go after those talks for us. And this situation is it's more pressing than anything right now because of the of the frustration levels. Mm -hmm. I put a post on here and asked for 100 people to come to the meeting. Oh, yeah, it was 107 people that said, Yeah, yeah, they backed me. We're already right. there. 125 <laughs> people sitting here about the issues, right? But in the meantime, somebody on council, some of these must have read one of these comments because these guys started to act on a few of these comments. I see them in the reports now, you know. Um, so I'm just saying that that community trust monies is not the easiest thing to go after that. This is why we're kind of putting it back in the field as not, part of the committee. It's not set up to be No, get us to the end, so to speak. Yeah. Exactly. No, appreciate kind of that. Contradictory. Here. So I just wanted to add um, some Caitlin, can you trust me with this? I've forgotten it. I have no idea if you're talking about getting back in on this. We had some of the. Oh, uh, yes, and Pat Holt and Marie talked on this. She's like, but we did have. Um, our community consultation did a CKLA interview, and we also had questions that people were asking. And one of the things, uh, I guess it's not related, but just to kind of share there, people always ask, why are MCA programs being funded? We don't fund programs that already have been funded somewhere else. There's programs that um, the generator program that um, over elders. That was the energy funded. So just kind of for there on that. But we did have conversations about the need to look into this issue. So it is a priority. And it does fall under the list of priorities that's already there. You could make almost anything fit under those things that was just put right in the trust document. So that's something that we have to work with every single year. So don't feel like we're not looking at it or we haven't heard it or the council hasn't addressed it because they have and we have heard them. So we are, you know, we are open to looking at it because it is different than what we see now. By and large, can help out with the same Thank you. Thank you very much for that. So we are going to move along. I do want to acknowledge that the work that you have put into the resolution, you have read that for us and made a proposal to us. You have members of council who uh, have committed to move it forward um, very clearly that you want timelines, you want reporting back. This is, you know, around the accountability aspect, which I think is completely reasonable. And I want to thank all of you for your contributions uh, to the discussion on this. And we will report back uh, at the next community meeting the status of this and district meetings will occur in the in between. But I'll make sure that we are reporting back at least what this what has happened. Um, with this proposed item uh, at ne next month's general meeting. So thank you very much. 
Okay, we're now going to move into the business from the floor uh, portion of tonight's agenda. So I'm now going to open the floor to any questions that members may have or items that they wish to discuss other than what we have already discussed. So, yes. Somebody have a response? And then Their response. So Remember. currently, um, we have, like you know, we have a new director at the CSS, which is Joey Moran Lozon. So what's happening now is you have your special needs application. So if you needed respite services, and you would apply for that, right? And that normally goes to the state. So what we're now working on is getting a committee that will get that strategic plan that the community members have worked so hard on. Um, off the ground and get it, get it working and get it going in the community because that was one of the things that we tried to dedicate so much time to. Um, that that plan development, like you were talking about, that was evenings and you know that was a lot of work and it was it was very emotional work. Um, and I want to thank community members for participating in that. Um, there were difficult conversations that were had. There was a lot of stuff shared in that plan. And we are hoping now to get that moving. We've been pressing for it to get moving forward. And we're hoping that's going to be happening very, very soon. Who is going to be heading that up? Um, so it would be under the Department of Social Services. We're in conjunction with partnerships made with, I'm going to say, Department of Health. So you still um, have your committee? We are have, you still on a regular no, basis? Or has this no. been installed for the past four or five years since we pulled it? I want to say it's been stalled for a good little bit right now. Okay, so yeah. this was something that should have been addressed three years ago. Then we decided to address it, bring us community members and parents that have special needs children to it. And then we can give you all the information, some tips, some ideas, everything. And then that's it. And all of your information that was provided during those sessions, um, myself and um, previous Chief Carolyn Francis presented to all of the directors of MCA all of the information in a PowerPoint, so all of them were in in receipt of that information, everything that was shared. Mm -hmm. um, we brought all the directors together, um, the current executive director at the time, all together to discuss the formation of that. So would you be saying, okay, a time frame, we're going to have maybe a facility and 15, 20 years oh. because of the strategic team that has been installed for so long. I know you all have other projects coming up and whatever, whatever. But that was one of those most important things I thought on the table because there is way too many here in Aquasasna. And my question is, if that's going to take you that long, then maybe me and my professional team that I have developed has a better chance of bringing that early entry, early entry to school program here to Aquazosna and bring that facility here to Aquazosna quicker than others <clears throat> might be able to, correct? I'm not gonna say it's gonna take us 15 years to do that because that, that I'm gonna say it straight up, that's ridiculous. That's in a ridiculous amount of time. And one of the things that, yeah. you know, like we we got on to this to the special needs and um you know we we started running really quick with that we did the strategic plan um there were other two previous chiefs that were also involved as well as chief julie phil jacobs who was online with us tonight um there was a lot of work that went into that mm -hmm. and um currently right now so we have our dcss director who is now putting forward a position of a director so it'll be a service navigator which is one of the top priorities on that strategic plan is to have a navigator because once you receive your diagnosis for your child you shouldn't be left alone right there was so many services and places to apply for funds that are out there that nobody knows about 
So this navigator will work with the community members to help them get through those um, processes. And that was, I believe, identified by many parents um, as a priority. They need someone that they can turn to. So that is coming forward. Um, okay, that's great. You know, and honestly, with this Jordan's principles thing here in Akwazasna, again, I think they are only picking and choosing who they want to help. I have contacted them. I'm waiting still. Jordan's principles, three years. I went through my, uh, went through their director, manager, oh, whatever. Six months went by and I haven't heard anything. I have to reach out to Jordan's principles myself to get my information of what's going on. Okay. That's frustrating. Um, but it's also frustrating to. I don't know. We need the help. That's all I have to say. A special needs parents, the special needs children, we so need help in a dire way. My autistic son's 11. I have a 30-year-old that's being diagnosed as autism as well, who is depressed. You know, it's constantly on my mind that I'm going to walk home tomorrow and see him hanging from the rafters. He needs help. We need these help. With my 11-year-old, I did everything under the sun to bring him out of a bubble that he couldn't speak, he, no touch, no eyesight, no, no eye contact, nothing to where, mama, pay attention to me. I want a hug, I want a kiss. It's so much work, it's so tiring, it's so exhausting, but it is so well worth it because they are brilliant. He is so smart and we need, I know we need a lot of things here, but that is one of them. I know we need the power. I understand all that, but you, this is another aspect of council that needs to help the community. I, I don't know. We need help here and going outside the territory is not helping. That's why I have a team of clinical directors, a lawyer, um, constables, RCMP officer, anybody that has to do with um, special needs and autism that are on the chair of Jordan's principles and the parliament. I have that team and they're ready to move. They're ready, you know? And I said, well, let's try and give Mohawk Council and Akwazasana a chance to move on this themselves. But, you know, we are here, we have the information, we know the ropes, we know how to start. I had said this before in our um, strategic planning team, and I only gave up so much information and I only gave up so much contact because what I have compiled in the past 11 years, <laughs> it's, it's worth, it's too much, you know, it's worth too much to give it up. And I've worked too hard to get all these people lined up to come here and give you training first aid training, you know, the first responders, the police officers, the firemen, training on how to handle an autistic person. My son is 11 years old, 285 pounds, and he's five foot eight. Now, is anybody going to be able to handle him when he has an outbreak, you know, a meltdown? Are you going to read? How are you going to react? Are they going to take him down right away? I've seen it happen. And that's scary because my 11 year old is bigger than me and he looks like a man, you know? So that's scary. You know, these are the things that we have to think about. And these people, these special people are also looking for jobs. They want to be, you know, in the workforce. I'm getting them calling me, how can I get in? Does MCA have a program? How can we develop it? You know, what can you do? What can you do? I'm not going to give everything away because <laughs> I work too hard. And if we have to do this um, privately, then we will. But we would really like the participation and the backup from Mohawk Council. So that's where I am with that. That was my one of my greatest concerns for so many, for so long since that strategic planet. And then just all of a sudden, I hear nothing. Mm -hmm. That was very upsetting. 
thank you thank you we appreciate you sharing sharing that and i can uh the members are here there are members who are on that committee and we will move it forward we will and thank you for sharing and reminding us that the work that we've done and what we and pointing out what we have not done thank you uh julie did you have something you wanted to add to this discussion yeah i just wanted to say that um yeah i was part of the whole you know um trying to get this off the ground and one of the biggest problems that we kept hearing was that we had to have a strategic plan we had to have a strategic plan and that was something that was coming from our own administration so as you know um community member like i know you were part of that plan and we got that done and we had it we presented it we passed an mcr from council presented it back to the um um associate director um the ed and it was supposed to go back to the um departments and as you recall we said you know there's monies that everyone receives in their programs to um do something within their programs for special needs. They're included in the monies that we get. There should be things that we can do quite quickly. And we had a list of short, long, you know, medium term. We had, we had to me, we had it all that it should have been able to be picked up and go. And unfortunately, and I'm not making excuses, it didn't, but it didn't go. I asked again during this round of, um, you know, budgets and I, we asked constantly like, okay, like, what what do we have to do now and then they said well you didn't allocate any monies and I'm like that's you know like it it, it is a frustration uh, that um you know from our end as well and I just wanted to say that I hear you I thank you for bringing it up because it has been silent on the um on community members part too it hasn't been brought up in a while and and we all need to be reminded that the, the situation is isn't going to go away and that we have to we have a lot of work to do in this in the fall we plan to go visit um oh Vanessa will have to help me with the the name of the um facility in six nations you know we had those plans of course weather and everything um ends up pushing it to the spring so you know they are still things as um Chief Vanessa said that are ongoing with social um and hopefully we can get that that back out and say look you wanted this you know you wanted us to do this we spent the time and the money doing it making sure it got done and now we need you to to pick it up and and you know fulfill the um the work that has to be done in it. thank you thank you all right thank you very much uh for that i'm going to move along Cheryl. um you your report of November, December, all that, there's a lot of um, information that I have questions on a couple of them, and I'm hoping for short answers. Um, some of these are, uh, you had a meeting November 7th on the dis on discussion in Enbridge on the expansion of natural gas. Yeah. Um, so it's been November, December, January, we're already three, four months into it. What's the outcome of, uh, of having examined the flood of site out? So what are, what's the next step that you're taking? I mean, it was already shot down to expand or, and get natural gas on going well, over. So where is that with that? Uh, there's been no movement. I don't know where you. I don't. I don't know where you got. It's been shot down. There's no decision has been made. We're trying to figure out how a decision. Oh, oh. No, there was not a vote. Uh, there was a vote. I don't know. No. On, on that no. Line. No. Okay. So we're we're tentatively looking at bringing it to some sort of plebiscite, which is non-binding, but whether or not it's supported or not, but it's it's hasn't moved advanced anywhere. Okay. Um, November 23rd, you had a meeting with Cisco and you opened an account. How mm -hmm. much did you start that amount for in that account? We bought nothing. We actually wanted to open an account with them to do the turkeys and hams, but right. they couldn't respond fast enough, so there's nothing. November 9th, meeting with Dev Four Center. Uh, update on investments collaboration. What's the role that they're trying to collaborate with Dev Four Center? Are they not the company that's trying to bring in Arc over there? Cornwall? They're the company that bought the Nav Center, and they've all they've offered to us to collaborate on redesign of the the facility itself, so okay. that there's an Akwesasne component in their design. Uh, CMHC, the one-time special funding was passed on MCR. How much funding did they want? That I don't know. I think a couple hundred thousand dollars that was given into the reserves for existing facilities. So is there something else with like numbers and you give your little updates and things like that? No. That way I wouldn't have to ask this question. 
I, I welcome all the questions. This is accountability and transparency, and I put a lot of work into writing these things. Uh, council discussed and agreed to identify a male elder to represent the office of the Chiefs of Ontario. Who is it? Joe Lazor. The New York State land claims here, dated January 12th, there's been some movement and important decision. I believe uh, with the deadline of February 10th. Based on the mediation that was going on, and the judge made a ruling of something needed to get done by the February 10th. Where is that on the New York State land plan? Just for those online, I'm going to mute. Community members that were charged. Um, is there, is it going to impede on any like court case or rights? I don't. You had a meeting with the minister. <clears throat> So there was individuals uh, specifically in the Snide district that were setting up to do some hunting within the preserves, the reserve area, not Indian reserve, but reserve area. And uh, their equipment was seized by the natural resources. They weren't charged though. So we had a meeting with them about that. Um, the occupancy permits, the way they referenced that under the NCR, they have WP. So under the access near membership or access near residency law, the council has the ability to delegate authority to uh, to grant occupancy licenses for facilities like Jim Canusade, like the Family Wellness Center, so that if they bring in non-members of the community, they have permission to be here under the access near residency law. So council annually passes a resolution to delegate that authority to that facility to do that. Only for their clients, though. Not anybody else. Thank you. You're welcome. Just from your um, November, December reports, that we want a little more clarification. No problem. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, there's something about reconciliation um, each nation that they get involved. Three trillion, um, just an included. Is that something old or is that? I don't. I think there's three trillion. There's a there's you might be referencing a child welfare deal between First Nations in Canada and communities, and it's about a twenty billion dollar. I don't know if it's twenty billion dollar settlement. And what that is essentially is the federal government is compensating certain groups of people who were in child welfare systems, predominantly in um, foster care, and. Uh, they'll be compensating because what, what has been found is that Canada discriminated against children in care that are Indigenous and non-Indigenous. And part of the investment that the government's going to make is trans what they're calling transformation into the child welfare system so that those discriminations don't happen again. The residential school? I'm not aware of any new monies through residential school. Abram, what did you just talk about? Did it cover um, damages for abuse? No. Well, it's for children who were in care, right? So there are le there are varying levels, and there's also families that would have been affected, i.e. your child was taken. There's some compensation that will be available for them. I think to a certain degree, it's a very, for our community, I don't know that there's a whole lot impacted because we generally have had kids in our own care here. This is, affects a lot of communities that kids went into care and were taken out of the I know. But there, there, yes, there, there will be. There definitely will be people in our community that will are eligible for this settlement. It's not been ratified yet, though. So once it's been completed, uh, then we'll definitely be sharing more information so that people can determine whether or not they fit in that category. Yes. Um, for social assistance, for those that are off work you know Council have control of how much money is given to each individual. Does somebody have a response to that? Does it come, does it come directly from the law, right? 
So there shouldn't be no set limit on what a family should be getting and what counting must be to have control of Right? It's not coming to you guys, it's coming to people that are needed. Yeah, so I, I believe that as part of delivering our own service, we have to follow the, the standards and rates set by Ontario. So they would be similar to what Ontario would pay us recipients. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, that's something we could definitely look into. It should not be less, that's for sure. Anything else? Oh, I got one last one. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm seeing truck, but the car smoke, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm seeing truck with a flower. I see it this morning. And I'm like, where did our big cars go? I mean, you can barely get around the river road. Mm -hmm. It's all, I'm like, what's going on with our cars in the winter? Did it shoot the bed? I don't know. <laughs> we can find out, definitely find out. I seen that coming up here today. There was a, cloud, a regular pickup truck plowing the road, and I thought, that's weird. They did purchase a regular truck, a Dodge truck with a plow for the smaller roads. I don't know if there's some issue with with bigger plow. We can find out. Well, I'll tell you about a leaf roll over there. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. And our uh, um, subvention vehicle and um, the line of them, like, utilizable, will stop right on Third Street. Mm -hmm. You said something about um, it has to go through some. What did you say? Me? Oh. No, there was, uh, they're trying to do a traffic study to be to make sure that every. Well, we changed it. Sometimes uh, there was one, the ones that the ones that were put up in the Navajo came by way of MCI. They were passed by MCI. They were passed by MCI. And then figure out another way to slow them down. Coming from you know this direction and that direction, not getting any stops, and even the police are racing down here, whether they don't have to or not. And then workers that don't live here are doing the same damn thing. They're flying, going into work, and they're flying, leaving work with the lunch. You make nobody drive and slow. And San Diego is a small place, too much traffic congestion. And you know, it's only right to have stop signs here and there where I, they need to be. I can follow up with the IEG and uh, see where the status is on that. Yeah. Yes. My point is um, during the electrical outage, was the chief of police in this community? I don't know. So, what is the thing that your head honcho there of public safety should be right here in this community? Need be? Should be what's needed? Do you want to add something to that? I can confirm he was here. I attended several meetings with him throughout the power outages, both a uh, both time, um, and he was present. You good? Yeah. Last call for anything from the floor? Okay. I want to add for something. Uh, I don't see too many Ganad Golono out there, but uh, I want you guys to give some thought who are here. Maybe somebody listening or in the minutes, uh, I was approached by an elder asking if it's time or requesting a time that we think of changing the name St. Bridges to something else. So give us some thought if you think it's outrageous or not or whatever, but following through on a request. It's, that's the third time you have told me that. <laughs> Go ahead. Why are the police not going to be much about any more patrols in the village when uh, there's a lot of drug traps and uh, it is mainly the summer to be in front of the blue on uh, the drug trafficking uh, increase in the city. And we got elders living in fear around here now. So can somebody look into the top of that and this commission call should be a part of a little bit more than the other? Yeah, we definitely have had a conversation about that. We had a meeting scheduled with the um, Police commission, unfortunately, is canceled because of weather, um, but we will be bringing that up. And it's one of the things we want to talk about, make sure that specifically uh, certain areas are being covered because of which just like it. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm going to read a resolution for the record is to accept the attached general meeting minutes dated December 1st, 2022. Could I have a mover moved by Dwayne, second by Sarah? Discussion on the resolution? Questions. Questions been called on resolution. All in favor of the resolution? Julie, thank you. It is carried. 
So I do want to thank all of you uh, for joining us this evening, uh, the February 23rd, our general meeting here in Gnadigal. We've had the presentation of the Block 1 lands, and again, the ladies have extended information uh, to you and to meet with you if you want more information on the Block 1 lands. Emergency preparedness, thank you, Sarah and Cindy, for that presentation. We have received uh, a wording for a resolution that members have committed to follow up uh, back with council on, and we will report that back at the next uh, general meeting. So, Otherwise, thank you so very much for joining us. We will have our next meeting in March 30th in Jishnaina. So I'll, I'll take a motion to adjourn, please. Edward and Vince, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thank you all very much for your role in our team.